And our solid performer's subject today is best season ERA since 1920. And Greg is on there twice, 94 and 95, back-to-back unbelievable seasons of ERAs under 1.63. Had it working then, didn't you, buddy? <laughs> yeah, those were good years. You had a great interview in Chop Talk magazine that was online, I guess, a day or two ago. And I th- you mentioned to Joe when you sat down up here, wow, you get a great view of the ballpark, the game itself. It looks awfully easy up here. As broadcasters, I think we sometimes overanalyze the art of pitching. For you, what is the art of pitching? How do you how do you encapsulate well, that? It, it changes every inning. I think uh, probably the easiest way to pitch is you realize what the guy's going to hit and do what you can not to throw that. I think that's probably the easiest way. So uh, uh, if there's one pitch you know the guy can hit, you probably got two or three other ones that you can throw instead, and just try to keep it simple that way. I had a great time today at the banquet, especially when we were talking to some of your teammates and. I asked Eddie Perez, who was, quote, unquote, your personal catcher when when you were here, and Eddie was here at the same time. And I asked Eddie if it was catching you was more mental or physical, and he said mental because I had to teach Greg so much. (laughs) Yeah. I thought that was a great line. I mean, that's Eddie. Eddie was uh, always had fun behind the plate, and I think that's important. I think uh, sometimes you get too worried about giving up runs, your ERA, if you're going to win or lose, that you forget to have fun. And uh, Eddie... Eddie, Eddie did help keep the game fun. You're a 20-year-old kid. Did you ever imagine that this was going to happen to you? When you no. got to the big leagues with the Cubs? No. When you're 20 years old, you just hope you don't get sent back down to AAA. I think uh, that's what every first-year player goes through. And I know I went through it, and then hopefully you settle in and you realize that you belong, and, and you start to do what you can to become the best pitcher you can be. Who was the, mo- the toughest hitter you ever faced? And the fans might be a little surprised to hear who that was. <laughs> Well, it was Mickey Morandini. I mean, uh, hey, good hitter. <laughs> Guy could rake. Still and, cracks uh, me up. You know, hey. <laughs> Some guys just, uh, I guess, see things a little bit better than other guys mm-hmm. when it comes out of your hand. He, he was that guy for me. Wasn't Bonds, wasn't Bagwell, wasn't no. Pujols. It was Mickey no. Morandini. Well, those guys are easy because when you're facing those guys, if it matters, you just walk them. I mean, it's easy to throw four <laughs> balls up and away. That's the yeah. easiest pitch to throw One of the things that Jair's been working on, and quite successfully at times too, has been he's been able to get his two seamer to run back over the inside corner to lefty. Something you were known for. Was that something you developed as your career went on? Well, I think everybody has a two seam fastball, but it's usually a way to lefties and then righties. And I think uh, you have to learn how to throw it to the first base side of the plate uh, a little bit differently than you do, say, to the third base side of the plate, assuming you're right-handed pitcher. And, uh, you know, it's just really all about alignment. If you can align yourself correctly, then you could get that same amount of movement on both sides of the plate. Look at that play. Joe said he pitches an awful lot like Greg Maddox. He can field like Greg Maddox, too. Very nice. Congratulations, Thank partner. You. Welcome right. back to Atlanta and all the best. Number Thank 31, you. retired forever in Atlanta. And our thanks to Greg Maddox for joining us tonight.